Hello and welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about My Hero Academia chapter 285. Now I know I haven't made a review in a long time, but I thought with this particular chapter I'm going to be reviewing it because of what happened. I think you all know what I'm talking about, assuming you read the chapter, which I really hope you have if you're watching this video, because bear in mind there's going to be some pretty big spoilers regarding this chapter. So yeah, let's just get right into that. To start off, let's just talk about how Deku is currently as powerful. Shigaraki with no ends using Wyoming smash, Texas smash, St. Louis smash, you know, he's pulling all kinds of smash attacks against Shigaraki hoping to really bring him down, nothing of which obviously seems to work in the end, which is why, you know, Bakugo and Devon Todoroki kind of like comes up with this plan, although to be fair it's mostly Bakugo's plan, but he does need the other two to really pull it off. Speaking of Deku's arms, at the very first page we see a panel going back to when he was told that if he overuses his arms, you know, his arms are probably not going to be usable for much longer. In fact, he was told that if he uses them like two to three more times, they may no longer be usable at all, in fact. like So they may just be out of the game completely at that point. And given what we have seen these past few chapters, I don't really know, but I think at least one of his arms might end up in that particular state where he can no longer use it. And that's just my take on it, but like, that's just what I'm kind of feeling at the depth of my heart right now like I just feel like given the first page they wouldn't really show that unless it's actually going to be something that's being used at the end of this arc we're probably gonna find out that probably his left arm if I had to guess is going to be the one that's gonna be out because not just because of the constant smashing but also how he was bit by Shigaraki earlier a few chapters back which obviously caused his arm to be even more damaged to the point where he had to wrap black whip around it to really keep it going and that is something that I definitely think think is going to play a big part when it comes to his arm's health. Now before I get into Bakugo, let's talk about Shigaraki for a moment because Shigaraki had quite the moment in this chapter in my opinion and what I mean by that is his whole transition when he was hit by prominence burn. This is something that really stood out to me because in an earlier chapter we saw how Shigaraki was completely refusing to accept all for one sort of guidance if you will. Like he was saying that he wants this to be his own power and his own path. He doesn't want to follow in all for one's footsteps even though he was his mentor but now we see how this may or may not have been completely changed because of how much damage Shigaraki was taking he may have just simply accepted all for one for the time being at least simply because he needed to keep going he needed to stay in this fight he couldn't just accept defeat because of something like his own personal pride that is at least what I think is happening obviously it wasn't like completely explained I'm sure it will be but as of now we don't don't really know what happened in that particular moment. All we really saw was after All for One's message to Shigaraki, we see how he is bursting out this quirk that we have seen All for One be using, which is the forced quirk activation quirk, which is like these tendrils that will either attack you or simply activate your quirk whether you want it to or not. So I do think that we may be seeing either something like a different personality in Shigaraki, kind of like a temporary or worst case scenario permanent change of personality that All for One is simply taken over or he's obviously just gonna be himself but he's gonna accept All for One's guidance like internal guidance and guess inside of his head something that he initially didn't really want to do. Alright guys we have come to the big part of this chapter the one that everyone has been talking about Bakugo's moment in this chapter. Now Bakugo's moment in this chapter excluding his plan to actually charge up towards Deku with Endeavor and everyone else he had his own personal moment of glory or heroism whatever you want to call it and it is a pretty cool parallel to Deku in the, at the end of the day as well but there's obviously a, a one factor that I'm gonna talk about at the end of the video that is obviously like the really big one but before I get to that point let's just talk about the parallel of how Bakugo is reacting so he is basically reacting to these tendrils that Shigaraki is forcing out of him towards Deku with the intent to kill as we all know well kill kill or take his quirk because it is a forced quirk activation it's really hard to tell exactly what he's planning to do but we do know he wants to use it against Deku and do something so Bakugo's initial reaction obviously being something very similar to what we saw in chapter 1 or episode 2 of the anime when Deku simply charged to save Bakugo without thinking his body simply moved on its own that is what we're seeing now with Bakugo a huge moment for his character in my opinion because we've never really seen that trait in Bakugo he's 
he's never just moved on his own. He's always been in charge of what he's doing. He's always decided every, each and every move that he's done. Nothing has ever been just my body simply moved on its own. That's never been something that Bakugo has ever done. It. That's only ever been part of Deku's character. So to see that coming from Bakugo is a huge moment of growth in terms of his role as a hero because that means that he is willing to sacrifice himself for someone else, something that previously, even though we may have speculated that this might happen, we've never seen it. This is something that I found to be an amazing moment for his character, as I've said now probably like 10 times, but despite that, I, I just can't stress it enough, you know? Okay guys, let's talk about the big, big moment. The penetrating moment, if you will, the very final page of the entire chapter, when Bakugo was impaled about three to four times by Shigaraki. These tendrils went straight through Bakugo, piercing him, you know, no sign of quirk activation, just straight up killing intent. Now this is something that I want to talk about. A lot of people think that Bakugo might be dying, but no, he's not gonna die, guys, I promise you. Okay, I don't promise you, but I, I don't think he will. I believe he's not gonna die, like, to a 99% he's not gonna die and why I say that I'll, I'll get into that okay he's not gonna die because initially before Heroes Rising came out Bakugo was supposed to be part of the end game of the story he was supposed to be alongside Deku when the final fight arrived and even though Horikoshi has said he's gonna change that I don't think he's gonna change it so much that he would remove Bakugo from the story I seriously doubt that guys I think Bakugo is very much still gonna be there I just think the very end of the story is going to be very different so that is basically my reasoning as to why Bakugou will not be dying in this arc but there's also like obvious reasons like he is the second main character really right and he hasn't really fulfilled his character I don't think like there's so much more that Bakugou can be doing in this story that he hasn't done yet and if he dies now all of that's gonna be completely just gone we're never gonna see that so I really really hope he doesn't die and again I don't think he will so yeah I really just wanted to put that out there but to see him sacrifice himself risking his own life to the point where he could die that is as part of my previous point in this review a huge moment for his character it's just such a breathtaking display of his character and you know he's always been top two in my like out of my favorite characters in the story so to see him kind of just be up there and just do that it just I don't really know if I can put him I, mean, I want to put him as my number one above Hawks again given this chapter but I really don't know because Hawks is like such a lovable character to me that even what Bakugo did, although he definitely would deserve number one, I really want to see the next chapter before I really evaluate that on the basis that I really don't know what Horikoshi is currently doing, right? I don't, I really don't know. Like, is he actually gonna kill him off? Is he going to do something in, something crazy with Bakugo's character in the sense that, you know, we have a few theories out there that suggest that Bakugo will be sent back in time. A theory I'm not a fan of by the way but if that happens it happens I really wouldn't hate this series because of that I wouldn't hate his character I just wouldn't agree with the decision so I really hope he just kind of ends up being out of this arc for the time being and you know maybe he gets healed you know probably the old-fashioned way you know you just gonna have to recover kind of thing because the wounds although they look pretty serious I don't think they're necessarily going to be fatal because I think we've seen worse wounds in my hero academia than this like what we saw with night eye that was way worse than what Bakugo has gone through now so it's not really like an automatic kill move that has been done on Bakugo in my opinion I definitely see him walking away so to speak even if it is like him being out for the rest of the arc which I think he will be I don't think he's gonna get up anytime soon in this arc I think he's gonna be out until there's like some small time skip or just the movie moves on for a few months and you know whenever his wounds have recovered I think that's really what's gonna happen anyway I'm gonna end the review here let me know what you think down below in the the comments down below and as always if you did be sure to Detroit smash that like button if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't done so already this has been chaotic plus and remember toga is waifu toga is laifu